How's it growing? I have to admit something. I made a huge mistake in my early gardening days here in Florida. I've mentioned this before, but today it's time for a dedicated episode that- Yeah, you really f***ed up, Stack. Okay, but we were following the advice from our local extension office. Normally, UFI office gives great information, but- All right, just get to the point. All right, back in 2020, episode five of Stacks Urban Harvest, I thought I had the perfect solution for root knot nematodes. Those dirty, life-sucking parasites. We're talking soil solarization. Back then, I was a strong advocate for soil solarization, a common method where moist soil is covered with plastic for at least four weeks during the hottest part of the summer. The sun's heat sterilizes the soil, not only killing the root-feeding nematodes, but killing all the life in it. At the time, I thought it was just fine since I would add fresh compost before replanting. For nine years, I used this method in the garden beds. For nine years, and it did more harm than good. It lost its soil structure, its ability to hold water. You might as well have been growing in the sand, Stan. Right, what I discovered has been a much more effective way at not only controlling root feeding nematodes, but it also improves the soil significantly. Just so the viewers are abundantly clear, this was a significant improvement to the soil's health. The results are stronger plants, higher yields, and fewer pest issues. Drum roll, please. And the answer... We switched to regenerative principles in this garden, building on our existing biodiversity and composting practices. So by switching to the exact opposite of soil solarization, you achieve better results. Yes, regenerative practices focus on soil health with minimal soil disturbance. In contrast, you could say that soil solarization is a soil disturbance. Other soil disturbance could be tilling or digging or even a chemical disturbance. Anything that disrupts the soil microbiology is a soil disturbance. Regenerative practices also includes keeping the soil covered to protect it. When I switched from solarizing to cover cropping, the results were amazing. I saw more earthworms, improved soil structure, restored water retention. At the end of last year's tomato season, there were zero visible nematode knots on the roots. Alan Skinner, a soil food web consultant in Jacksonville, Florida, examined the soil sample from my garden, and what he found was fascinating. The soil looks good uh, in general. I was also happy to see a lot of nematodes in your sample, which is good. You heard that right. There were plenty of beneficial nematodes, but the term beneficial nematode may not be what you think it is, as Alan explained in my chat with him. The bottom line? The soil food web that soil biologist Dr. Elaine Ingham teaches about works. Everything that she teaches, it works. I mean, she's right. Cover cropping and feeding the soil food web creates a resilient garden ecosystem. It's not just about managing pests. It's about building long-term soil health that benefits every part of the garden. Want to see Alan's full analysis and learn what to add to the soil to build its microbiology? Check out the full episode here or the link in the description. There's also a more condensed version. You ready, Bo? Live regeneratively and let's grow together. Mm -hmm.